Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today's update on Wi-Fi 6. We have Cambium Network's Darren Hermans, Director of Product Line Management, with us today. Darren, when you're ready, you can take it from here. Great. Thank you, Olivia. And uh, thank you all for hanging on for an extra few minutes there. Uh, uh, I'm actually, so good evening. Good evening, good morning, and good night, I guess. Um, I'm actually in Dubai right now and attending the uh, High Tech, uh, uh, high tech uh, Dubai um, hotel conference. So we had a good opportunity today to talk to a lot of hoteliers and this uh, topic of 802.11ax and Wi-Fi 6 came up. So the timing is really good. So I am joining you from Dubai and it's uh, it's 8 uh, 808 p.m. here in Dubai. So uh, for the folks that are um, in California and, and other parts, uh, thank you for dialing in early. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be talking about 11ax, 11AX and Wi-Fi 6. About one year ago, uh, we, we did give a technology update and reviewed, along with the help with, with Qualcomm, uh, this, the technology, what the, what the features were, why it was important, and why we care about 11A, uh, 11AX. So with uh, thanks to Qualcomm uh, for giving us some updated information, we're going to be talking today uh, about this technology. We'll talk about pre-standard versus post-standard chipsets and radios. And we'll talk about Cambium's investment protection and, and managing risk when you're looking at new technologies and when, when you should be upgrading and when you should be making these, uh, these, these decision points. Let's go and look at the next slide, Olivia. I appreciate if you could uh, forward that for me. One of the things that also we want to take about five minutes to talk about is Xeris technologies. Now, Cambium Networks uh, uh, bought the Xeris business uh, in, in August of this year, so it's been about two months or so. We're into, into our third month now. Uh, after the acquisition, and lots of activity going on around the, the Xeris acquisition, and lots of integration work has been started by your engineering teams. They're already starting work on engineering uh, on integration with Xeris uh, software products and packages, and, uh, and so helping our customers to see how they can benefit by using uh, the new parts of that portfolio. So when we talk about Cambium Networks and Xeris, we talk about uh, SME and SMB, small, medium business to large venues. Uh, this is one brand, one portfolio, one team, and that's that's the, the that's the approach that we're taking uh, through all of our integration work. Look at slide number three, and Olivia, and we'll just just position briefly. And this is the only slide I'll really share about about the uh, uh, the portfolio. So I just want to show people a little bit of a picture as to how we are positioning um, uh, the Xeris product technologies. Uh, alongside the CN pilot from from Cambium, and really the breaking point is it's just soft. There's a soft fuzzy line in the enterprise market space, and that's where you're going to start to see the transition from CN pilot to to Xeris. And of course, you know these products can be used across a wider segment than I'm showing here, but this just gives you a, a clue as to where we see a, a lot of the migration point in, into the Xeris technology. What Xeris brings to the Bring to the Cambium partners and the Cambium portfolio is really scalable capacity. And this ability to use software to find dual and quad radios, to scale capacity to large venues, as well as uh, advanced services management, things like application policy controls, uh, easy pass uh, BYOD app, uh, code, uh, BYOD um, applications. So, this is the software type of services that are uh, available uh, through the Xeris and the XMS cloud and XMS enterprise product. So everything from lodging, small offices, um, education, all the way up to stadiums, event centers are covered uh, by the portfolio from Cambium Networks. And that's it for the Xeris. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll jump right now into 11AX and, and we'll talk about that. Uh, Olivia, let's look at the next slide. So there is a need for higher capacity, and this this is this is the world that you live in, that I live in, that we're all dealing with these things today. So we live in an always connected social media world, right? Phones are always connected. People have Instagram, Twitter, all the social media apps are running 100% all the time. They're they're never turned off. Uh, that that is the world we live in today, and that's the world that is changing the way we look at the network, uh, the network topology, and the network architecture. Another key thing that a lot of people are kind of missing is that in 2019, voice over Wi-Fi calling passed, surpassed voice over LTE or voice over cellular calling. 
so actually voice over Wi-Fi is really is really a number one voice app um, for mobile devices and, and mobile networks and where's that where's that traffic going it's all going over the wireless land that uh, you folks on this call are architecting and deploying and managing another key thing is IOT applications and and IOT is not just for your home it's not just for your Google home or your your Alexa product it, it actually IOT is now infiltrating every type of enterprise and so IOT, you're going to find it in, in education markets where schools are looking at biometric attendance. They're looking at sensors for uh, security sensors, uh, temperature, lights, and so forth to in increase the efficiency in the schools and to increase the security and safety for, for the students. Um, but really, when you look at the IOT space and you look at what is successful, IOT really works best when it interfaces with people. And so that's one of the trends you're going to see a lot more in the decade to come. You're going to see IoT devices, info, IoT capabilities infiltrating every device around us and interacting with, with human beings through, through apps that run on our phones. And so that's going to increase the density in, in Wi-Fi networks. And it changes the way we architect wireless LAN. So that's a key, a key aspect for 11AX. And of course, no need to really talk about it, but uh, massive streaming. Uh, no, nobody is not experiencing that. We're all experiencing massive streaming. 4K live TV, 4K, uh, 4K uh, Ultra HD live TV is experiencing a 36% growth between 2016 and 2021. Uh, that's uh, is a huge growth rate in, in ultra high definition live TV. And education markets are investing heavily in augmented reality and virtual reality technology. That's where the money's going uh, for the next decade in education is AR and VR, and the bitrate requirements are, are going through the roof. So these, these are the, this is the world that we live in. This is the world that you and I deal with on a daily basis. And this is the world right here that 11AX is designed to address. Lydia, let's look at the next slide. So Wi-Fi 6, we're finally able to break through the gigabit throughput barrier. With 11N, uh, we had MIMO, we had 40 megahertz channels, but really 11N was effectively only about 150 megabits of actual usable throughput. And if you look at the average device, so I'm talking to you actually right now on a, on a brand new um, uh, Samsung S10, it's, it's a new phone, it's the latest one from Samsung. It only has a two-by-two two radio, two transmit streams and two, two receive streams. Every one of you that have a phone today, your phone likely is a two-by-two two phone. If it's a little bit older, it might be a one-cross-one, one, but most likely all of you have a two-by-two two smartphone uh, today that you use. That's a very, very common configuration. Two-by-two two is what the laptops all use. Only, uh, so 95% of all laptop sales are all two by two. So we look at two by two devices. That's a very important number to be talking about. We talk about 11AX and aggregate ethernet throughput. Uh, common ethernet bit rates with two by two common clients. 11AC only hit about 500 megabits per second. And that's assuming you could actually use an 80 megahertz wide channel. So even with all the advantages of 11AC, it's 4X faster than 11N, we have VHT rates, we have higher QAM, we have multi-user MIMO, it's still only about 500 megabits. We still are not at the gigabit barrier. We're just not there yet. But with AX, we are now going to exceed that gigabit throughput barrier. Uh, with AX, the, the key way it does this is through greater efficiency and efficient use of the protocols. So we have high HE, which is high efficiency rates. We have higher QAM. Uh, we have new technologies, OFDMA and multi-user MIMO. Ultimately, the, the key value of 11AX is that it is, it is becoming a deterministic access network. It's deterministic, meaning that the access point makes all the decisions and tells the client devices when to connect, how to connect, when to roam, and when not to roam when to go to sleep, and when to wake up. So it's a deterministic network, and that's really the basis for the efficiency advantages, advantages we're gonna get with Wi-Fi 6. Let's look at the next slide, and uh, we're gonna drill down a little bit more into, into some of these key features. So these are the features we've, 
we all know about. Uh, today on this call, we're going to drill into multi-user OFDMA and multi-user MIMR. We're going to focus mainly on the advantages that those two technologies will offer because that's where the, the biggest bang for the buck is going to come with 11AX. Doesn't mean the other things aren't important. They are absolutely, positively super important. Um, spatial reuse, uh, uh, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, what, what can I do with an 8x8 access point that's very closely aligned with the capabilities of OFDMA and MIMO? So I'm really excited to see what we can do with 8x8 access points as well. So but we're going to focus today on OFDMA and, and MIMO because those are really our, our biggest bang for the buck. Let's look at the next slide, slide seven. And we're gonna drill down a little bit more into the downlink direction. So when an access point is transmitting to a client device, that's, we call that downlink or down, uh, the, down speed, the downlink direction. So downlink multi-user OFDMA and downlink multi-user MIMO. Those are two of the really key technologies. They are not compatible, actually. Interestingly enough, you cannot use them both at the same time. The access point will choose, uh, depending upon the time when it's transmitting, whether to use OFDMA or whether to use multi-user MIMO. That, that decision point will be made up to the algorithms that are running in the radio inside the access point. So when the access point chooses to use OFDMA, it will do so based upon the needs of the client, the client device. So voice over wireless LAN, IoT devices, these always connected mobile devices, uh, the access point will choose to send multi-user OFDMA packets. And when it does that, it allocates the transmission resource units as small as two megahertz. So really, the, the access point, by using these very small uh, allocation units, it makes a more efficient use of both time and frequency. It actually multiplexes the client connections in both time and frequency. So it's kind of like taking a truck and loading up with a whole bunch of different size boxes. Some boxes are small, some boxes are very large, but packing the boxes in very tightly into the back of a, of a moving truck, that's, that's what OSDMA does. It packs the boxes in very tight and multiplexes in both time and frequency domain. We're going to see this in this technology in higher education. We're going to see it in high density hotel environments um, and enterprises as well. Now, there's going to be other times when the devices, the, the mobile devices or laptops or smartphones are, are trying to consume lots of bit rate. For example, streaming um, uh, ultra HD content augmented reality or virtual reality headsets, which could use 10, 20, or 30 megabits of bandwidth uh, you know, per device. And so in these situations, the access point will transmit to multiple devices at the same time uh, by multiplexing in the, in the, spatial, the spatial streams, by taking the, the transmit streams from the antennas and allocating them to unique devices. So up to four unique multi-user devices uh, per 8x8 eight eight access point. The benefit here is high capacity and high bit rate. So high capacity, high bit rate, ideal for streaming media, high bit rate applications, generally works best for stationary devices. Stationary devices that are not moving around in an environment uh, because it does require beamforming for multi-user MIMO to be effective. So both technologies will actually be leveraged by the same access point depending upon what the application requirement is for the client device. That's in the downstream direction. Now what happens in the upstream direction? Let's look at the next slide, slide number eight. Today, we, we, we have a problem and when we architect networks. Uh, very common problem you see it in hotels. In a hotel, the people, in fact, that's why I'm at this hotel show uh, you know, this week in, in, in Dubai, talking to people about these very same issues. In hotels, you'll, you'll put an, an access point in, uh, do a site survey and say, oh, look at this access point. It's got great signal in you know, three rooms or four rooms. And yet, when a guest goes into one of those rooms, they, they don't always, they're not always able to connect to the access point. Well, what happened? Well, the problem is 
that a, a typical smartphone is just a fraction of the power that a typical access point will put out. So an access point will put out, you know, 30 dB EIRP, and, and, a, and a smartphone might be 10 or 12 IRP. The, the signal is a fraction of what the access point can do. And so that, that creates an imbalance in the upstream and downstream directions. So what we need to do is we need to boost the upstream speed. And we can do that with AX. AX uplink multi-user OFDMA actually allows multiple devices to pull their, pull their transmissions together and increase that reverse path range. They can increase the, the, the signal power of the multiple devices talking upstream to the access point. And so that greater combined SNR, greater combined signal to noise ratio, will give us an improved range for low powered client devices, mobile devices, talking to an access point, 11AX access point. So the uplink direction, multi-user OFDMA is gonna make the network, is gonna improve the network range. In the uplink direction, multi-user MIMO will increase the speed. So combining multiple devices talking, up to four devices talking back to the same access point at the same time is gonna give us up to 4.8 gigabits per second of, the, of, of RF phi rate. So the phi rate, the actual air interface rate, will be up to 4.8 gigabits per second in the upstream direction. So the increase in the uplink data rate, a reduced latency is ideal for gaming, which requires a lot of bi-directional bandwidth speed, and, and high, density, high density applications in, in uh, education, uh, hospitality, conference rooms, and meeting centers. So in both the downlink direction, and the uplink multi-user OFDMA and multi-user MIMO will actually increase range and increase throughput and decrease latency in the network. And these, these technologies will all work uh, with the same types of devices and same APs with Wi-Fi 6. Let's look at the next slide. So there's more stuff about it. There's more stuff with Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so 1024 QAM, it's a 30% Top line speed improvement over AC. The nice thing about 1024 QAM is it'll work with uh, 11 AC clients as well as 11 AX. So it's an improvement even for legacy devices. Uh, one of the ones that I'm particularly interested in is going to be the spatial reuse. And that's the ability of multiple BSSs, that's a, a, a wireless network, that's an access point and clients connected to that access point. We call that the BSS. We're going to allow multiple BSSs to overlap using the same frequency space. And so that they can, they're gonna use that uh, technology called BSS coloring uh, to identify uh, each unique access point and each unique client that belongs to the, to the same BSS and allows the multiple overlapping BSSs to share the same frequency space. That's one of the ones I'm, I'm particularly interested in. I think also the, um, the, the target wait time is something that we really wanna see happening. There's been a lot of activity, a lot of work done, even with 11AC, to increase the battery life uh, by adding uh, better sleep timers to the client devices. But in 11AX, it gets significantly better. Even with AC, the client still has to be listening, even though it may defer transmission. With 11AX, both the, the actual client device can be told to go completely asleep. Don't listen, don't talk until, you, until it's time to wake up. So having the, the target wait time negotiated between the client and the access point creates a deterministic network where the clients can actually sleep when they don't need to be listening or talking. And so we're gonna see improved battery life for both uh, mobile devices and significantly better battery life for IoT devices. So being able to get many years of use out of a single device with a single battery that's one of the goals of, uh, of Wi-Fi 6 and 802.11ax. Let's look at the next slide. So those are, those are some of the five things that we're looking for coming. Now, when should we start you know, considering when to, when to upgrade? What, what is sort of that inflection point? And really, it, comes, it all comes down to the mobile device itself or the client devices. And that's the key thing about any technology. Even if you folks recall when we, we went from uh, 11N to 11AC, 
it was always about the client devices. So let's take a look at where we're at. I mentioned earlier that I'm actually talking to you right now on a Samsung S10. So it's a, it's a you know, Samsung phone released uh, March of last year. It has an 11AX radio, two by two. Apple iPhone 11, just last month was launched. It has an 11AX, two cross two radio. But interesting, both Xiaomi and Huawei, also, the, 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 also in the top four of global smartphones, did not put an 11AX radio. So they are waiting to do that in their next, their next generation of, of, uh, of phone. So today, only two of the top four vendors of smartphones support 11AX. The net effect of that decision is it pushes out the adoption. It pushes the adoption point out further. And so we're looking for the point, not when the first device ships with the new technology, we're looking for the point at which about 50% of the devices in the network support that new technology. So that point is probably going to happen in late 2020 or early 2021. That's, that's the predictions is we'll hit that 50% threshold for 11AX penetration in early 2021. So that's still a little over a year away from now. Why so far? It seems like a long time. Well, just consider the fact that the average phone refresh cycle today is now greater than 25 months. People are keeping their phones at least two years now. So at what point will 50% of devices be upgraded? Well, approximately a year, approximately. And with only two of the top four smartphone vendors supporting the technology, it pushes that cycle a little bit beyond that, that 12 month range. So that's why the, the predictions are um, 12 to 14 months uh, from now, we'll start to see that 50% penetration point. So that's an inflection point to consider. What else should we be considering? Is there other factors? Let's look at slide 11. There are other factors to consider. And if you've been in the, in the networking space uh, for a long time, you've been through this before. You have done this before. And what happened last time will happen the same this time as well. We had the same adoption issues when we went from 11A to 11N back in 2009, 10, and 11. We saw the same thing in 2013, 14, and 15 when 11AC was launched. It's the third year is, is the really big, big year. So what we saw before with 11AC, we will likely see again. And, uh, and the predictions are that 2021 will be the really big network uh, year uh, for upgrading um, to, to Wi-Fi 6. It takes the market about three years to adjust to the new technology. So 11AX, uh, the first early products and early chipsets and early phones available in 2019. 2020 should be a good year for it. And in 2021 will be, will be a, a definite uh, solid, solid year when 11AX will be such a, will be a key technology and the portfolios will all be converted over uh, to 11AX technology. So same thing we saw before, we're going to see it again uh, in this go around. Let's look at slide 12, as we've already talked about some of these, uh, these trigger points. The overall timeline uh, for 11AX started back in 2014. And, and uh, what we saw in, in late 2018 and earlier this year, 2019, we saw 11AX pre-standard access points available. Uh, they have some of the technology. They have OFDMA, uh, multi-user MIMO. Uh, but they don't have all of the key technologies that we need to really make the network, uh, to, to, to build out the 11AX and Wi-Fi 6 networks that we really want to build. Uh, the technology is just not there yet, but it is now. So we've, we've, gone, we've now crossed from that pre-standard chipsets to chipsets that are fully upgradable to the standards compliant technology. And that's available now for, de for design work. And that's what Cambium is working with. Cambium is working with the, the chipsets that are fully AX standards compliant and are software upgradable to support all the AX standards. So that's where we're sitting right now at the end of 2019. We are predicting and hoping that the IEEE will ratify the 11AX standard this month, November 2019. But even the, the um, interesting, if you look at the IEEE's 
uh, project websites where they publish the status of the different uh, standards that they're working on, uh, they actually show a timeline that extends clear into into September to November of 2020. And so they, they allow for a larger window of opportunity for them to complete their ratification work, although it's likely to happen this month in, in November 2019, but it could take a bit longer. Uh, we don't know exactly when the standard is going to be adopted, but this, is, this looks like it's, it's predicted to be this month, but it could extend, it could extend out. Um, let's drill in a little bit more about these pre-standard and standards compliant radios, because this is a really key feature. And this, this is a key technology because I don't want you folks to, uh, to waste your money, waste your time, um, because whatever, if you bought a pre-standard technology, you're, you're going to end up having to replace it with, with standards compliant hardware. So we want to make sure we make the right decisions and the, the right decision timing uh, get the right technology. We'll look at the next slide, and we'll give you a little matrix here showing that what is a pre-standard chipset versus a, a standards compliant 11AX chipset. So the standards compliant chipsets are available now, so Canon is developing its product based on. So what does it do and why do we care? Why do we care about standards compliant? Well, first of all, we care because the standards compliant chips will support up to 37 OFDMA users versus eight. 37, so higher density with the standards compliant chipsets. We, we like that, we care about that. We care about flexible deployments. We care about the ability to, to double your network capacity with when you have 11AC clients, when you have legacy devices and legacy networks. And we care about your ability to update that network for the next five to seven years. Uh, we care about the, uh, the, the uh, greater outdoor range that you're gonna get with the preamble boost and the, uh, the subcarrier doubling the sub subcarrier power on the, uh, the, the standards compliant chipsets. So your outdoor range is going to be in increased. Your heavy user density is going to be increased. Higher data rates, more devices supporting OFDMA, which means less errors, uh, higher reliability, and lower latency networks. This is what we care about, and this is why Cambium is using standards compliant chipsets and have really avoided the, the, the problem that's caused by pre-standard chipsets. Let's look at the next slide, Olivia. So investment protection, this is, this is a key thing because when you're looking, you're sitting now in November you know, 2019, um, your customers may be budgeting for their 2020 network upgrades. They may be planning an education market, for example, they're planning for summer 2020, right? They are thinking today in November for what they are going to do in June and July of next year. They're, they're planning for that now. And so you need to offer some investment protection. And that, that's what Cambium is delivering, both in hardware and in software. Cambium is delivering this investment protection and risk management. So one of the things we're doing is we're using standards compliant chipsets that are software upgradable and fully compliant to the standards and we can continue to upgrade the software as new features and capabilities are released. That's a key technology. Also, we're using software-defined radios that allow us to change the configuration of the access point to support either dual five gigahertz capability to, to increase the speed for legacy networks and then migrate to full eight by eight. Uh, in, in the future. So really building out a, uh, using software defined radios to build out a five to seven year type technology. On the software side, you have options. Uh, we'll be able to manage this access point from the CN Maestro single cloud dashboard. Uh, that's the, sing the CN Maestro is, is famous for its ability to offer a single pane of glass for everything from your outdoor broadband, millimeter wave, microwave type links, all the way to ethernet switching and enterprise Wi-Fi under a single cloud dashboard. And of course, with the Xerus acquisition, now we're bringing in the capabilities to manage this 11AX, this Wi-Fi 6 technology using Xerus's cloud services and Xerus's enterprise management system uh, that gives you the control over application policies, over services, IoT device segmentation, and ability to manage more services on the network. So you can, you can grow your network's capabilities using Cambium software. So both hardware and software investment protection. 
let's take let's take another drill down now on the next slide and drill into this capability that Cambium is delivering with this new uh, first product that we that we launch with the with 11 AX. It, it starts out today. You know, you're budgeting for 2020. You know, education market is a good example of that. Uh, they generally do their installations in the summertime. They're thinking about it today, but the devices that they have in the schools are still going to be 11 AC, right? They're going to be 11 AC probably for the next two to three years. They're going to be 11 AC. So what do you do? How do you provide investment protection? And this is one of the ways we can do this. So we start with configuration as a tri-radio, tri-radio AP configuration, 2.4 gig, 4 by 4 5 gig, 4 by 4 another second 5 gig radio, 4 by 4 so now we have three radios in one AP uh, providing all this extra capacity and doubling that 5 gigahertz network capacity for high-density networks that still have legacy 11 AC clients. That's a great technology for 2020 and moving into 2021. So what do you do you know, in a few years after that? Well, as more 11 AX devices come into the network, we can now reconfigure the same access point so that it now operates as a dual radio AP with one 2.4 gig radio, four by four, and a five gig, eight by eight. So what's that gonna give you? Well, those things we talked about earlier, remember those uplink direction benefits, the uplink multi-user mindlink, getting up to 4.8 gigabits per second. That's what you're gonna get with, with that software-defined radio. Uh, we talked about the uplink multi-user uh, OFDMA, and you get the increased range with multiple devices being able, up to four devices combining, uh, actually more than that, 37 devices total, uh, 37 devices being able to combine their uh, their packets in, in, in multi-user OFDMA frames and be able to increase the range of the network and increase the, the, the signal to noise ratio. All of those benefits are gonna come by using the software-defined radio. So this is, this is a great example here of, of providing this investment protection um, in, in both hardware and, and software. Okay, that's, uh, that's the end of our update. Uh, Olivia, next slide, please. And we'll just kind of wrap up a little summary of what we, we talked about. The IEEE standard is likely to be ratified in November 2019, that's this month, uh, but it could take a bit longer. Mobile device, the mobile devices are slow to adopt 11AX. Uh, surprisingly, a little bit slower than we expected, but we expect that, that trend to grow in 2020. We expect certainly by uh, Q3 2020 that the top phone vendors will all be shipping 11AX products. With 11AX, we are looking for higher capacity networks in both the downlink and the uplink direction. And that, those are very important things, downlink and uplink. And we're only going to get that, that uplink directional benefit with the, the standards compliant radios. We're not going to get that with pre-standard released products. We're looking for improved spectrum efficiency. Some greater spectrum efficiency that means greater use of the, the frequencies that we have available in the 5 gigahertz band and greater throughput in the presence of more interference and more device, higher heavy, heavy device Count so high user count and high density. And we'll increase the they increase the noise floor, they increase the interference level, and we're expecting improved spectrum efficiency even with this higher density. That's what we're getting with uh, IEEE 802.11ax and Wi-Fi 6. And so with Cambium, uh, we're 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 providing the investment protection and the new technology to help you uh, design, design better networks and, and migrate your customers to higher performance in, in, the next, uh, in the next decade. So uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, let's go ahead and Olivia and uh, take some questions from the audience. We wanted to, I wanted to make sure that the, the time was, was short enough that um, we were able to, to, to add any, uh, some opportunities for people to ask questions if they have available, so we can, we can take some time to do that as well. Yeah, uh, Terry asks. Uh, Terry asks, is there any info on the EPMP 4000 outdoor platform? Uh, not, not in this update. Not for this update. I know that uh, you know 11 AX is is a key technology that's coming into the as you mentioned the EPMP 4000 will be the follow-on to our EPMP 3000. 
EPMP 3000, for those who don't know, was our, is our 11AC Wave 2 platform. It has some of our special sauce in it for, to, to increase the MIMO efficiency with uh, the EPMP 3000. The 4000 series will use 11AX chipsets. But no, this, this presentation today, we're not, we're not providing that. Um, that will come in the future webinars, so please stay tuned. And, and the, the EPMP team will certainly give you the information on the upcoming EPMP 4000. I'm also seeing some questions from uh, Don and Eugene asking if the presentation will be available for download. Oh yeah, uh, we're going to be up uploading it to YouTube and the online community forum, so you can find the recording and slides there. Okay. All right, well, I appreciate you folks uh, spending the time with us today, and, uh, and we will, uh, so, so uh, I see also some questions about Xeris. Um, you know, will Xeris will technology be able to support uh, both, the, both the EPMP and what's the, uh, not EPMP, Xeris technology asking you guys a question about EPMP and the rest of the Cambium portfolio. We do have, uh, we do have a, a, a very aggressive and comprehensive roadmap plan uh, for the for the Xerus platform to to take the best features of the Xerus platform, add some of those capabilities to see in Maestro. So over time, we're going to be migrating that technology. What's interesting about what we're going to be doing with the Xerus integration, this 11AX platform will be a a common hardware access point that will be that will be adopted by either C and Maestro or by the XMS system. So we're going to start to see some of that integration work between the C and Maestro system and, uh, and the partners using Cambian products and partners using Xerus. That first level of integration will start actually with the release of 11AX. And so 2020 will be a really important year to see some of those integration points. And then of course, over time, we'll continue to migrate and grow that, uh, that integration points between uh, the Xerus uh, portfolio and, and the Cambium C and Maestro and C and Pilot. But for now, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing even today uh, a lot of benefits from the Xerus platform by offering this, this scalable capacity and better service management for uh, larger enterprises and large, large venue networks. Uh, Darren, another question just popped into the questions box. Um, Vinay asks, how does the Wi-Fi Alliance help and plan to bring out Wi-Fi 6? Wi-Fi Alliance has actually already passed their certification. The, the, the Wi-Fi Alliance certification program was released in August. And so, they, so the, the Wi-Fi Alliance does not set the standards. IEEE creates the standards. Wi-Fi Alliance looks at those standards, and usually they are, you know, the, they're very, very complicated. And Wi-Fi Alliance looks at that, and they take a subset of the standards that they believe are really important that the industry agrees is really important for interoperability. And then the Wi-Fi Alliance writes their certification programs around interoperability of these key features. So they've already released their, they've already looked at the standards, they've looked at the, the release candidate um, standards of IEEE, and they have released the Wi-Fi Alliance certification that came out the, uh, in August of 2019. That was a key milestone, a key step for us to cross uh, in this process of getting the uh, Wi-Fi 6 out the door. And the name Wi-Fi 6, in fact, was created by the Wi-Fi Alliance, by the Wi-Fi Alliance, because people are kind of getting, you know, they're getting kind of fed up with these alphabet soup type letters. You know, we have 802.11, you know, AD, we have N, AC, all these different letters getting complicated to keep track of things. So the, the term Wi-Fi 6 was actually created by the Wi-Fi Alliance as a way of uh, establishing a new new nomenclature, a new naming scheme to describe these uh, Wi-Fi technologies. And they're, they're going to likely continue that trend in the future and, and create a Wi-Fi 7 and so forth and, and so on. So it's a, they're very much involved in, in helping us all to uh, inter develop interoperable systems and helping us all to understand the value of these networks when they're integrated. And they made a follow-up comment saying that they heard that QCM and BCM chipsets are already qualified as per the Wi-Fi Alliance. Yes, again, Wi-Fi Alliance is 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 not the standards body. So they, they do not write the standards. They do not set the standards. Only the IEEE does that. So yes, Qualcomm and Broadcom 
are, are they're part of the Wi-Fi Alliance Association. They they go to the Plug Fest. They help to write those standards. So yes, they are they are interoperable uh, with the Wi-Fi Alliance, but that is not the same thing as saying that they are compliant to the IEEE standard. Two different organizations. So two different organizations, complementary, but not exactly the same. So they both provide their own function and, and very important roles that they provide. All right, I think that's it for questions. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, that, that'll do it. So I, I appreciate that uh, the, the questions folks had and, um, and again, I appreciate your time and uh, I look forward to sharing more information about uh, Wi-Fi 6 later on as we continue to get our release products out the door. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Darren. Again, we'll post this recording on our YouTube channel as well as the Cambium Networks community forum. Thank you for joining and have a good day.